Hello again everybody, this is John and Glenn with BestPriceNutrition.com. Uh, today we're going to be reviewing Purple Wrath from Controlled Labs. Um, it's been on the market for a while. Um, you know, Controlled Labs got pretty big pretty quick there for a while. Um, so first we're going to run through the ingredients, uh, give you an idea of what's in here and then some of the effects you can expect. Um, right out the bat they have a uh, complex, basically a, a combination of amino acids. It's a 7 gram blend. Um, and just so you know, the larger size here is 90 servings, and the smaller one Glenn has is 45, 45. servings, so it's exactly half as much. So right off the bat, they have a, uh, like I said, an amino acid blend that's 7 grams. Um, it consists of leucine, valine, isoleucine, lysine, arginine, histidine, threonine, methionine, and phenylalanine. So, uh, Glenn, you want to run through some of the effects you'd expect from these? Yeah, the, the first three are what you call your branch chain amino acids, your leucine, valine, and isoleucine. Um, they're useful in, in halting um, muscle breakdown during workouts. Um, a lot of times you'll see them taken by themselves for people looking to uh, keep them from going catabolic, uh, keep them, their body building muscle rather than breaking it down. Uh, then you've got lysine and arginine. Um, those are in there for, I, I guess, what they're uh, a pump. Um, um, if you could get any of that from this. Um, I think more so it's just in there to provide the essential amino acids. Um, histidine is in there. Um, you could speculate that that's probably because of the beta alanine. Yeah, but that's proven not to be needed. Exactly. Not necessary with beta alanine. So. Yeah. Uh, threonine, uh, methionine, and phenylalanine, I think that that just rounds out their, their essential amino acid blend um, as far as those three having any um, a, a performance or a specific effect. Um, when taken by themselves, I, I'm not tr truly sure. I know phenylalanine, um, more so the D version of the phenylalanine, DL phenylalanine. That's both, yeah. Um, is, is, oh, actually, I'm sorry, that is both. That is both, yeah. It is useful for pain, more importantly, pain in the back. Sure. But uh, as far as what's inside here, I think that they're just rounding out their essential yeah. amino And if you have PKU, you'd know if you had it, um, mm -hmm. you should not take this product because of the phenylalanine. Yes. Um, it's an inability to convert that amino acid, so the accumulation of it is toxic if you have that. And you'd know it because you'd have it since birth. Yes. Um, so, independent of that, so it sounds like they're trying to get the essential amino acids. They're all free-form amino acids. Um, you know, if you've seen our videos in the past, we've talked about free-form amino acids. And, you know, really they're going to do their best when they're in a non-competitive environment, i.e. an empty stomach. Because mm -hmm. um, if they're in the presence of other peptides, they don't seem to absorb as well because they're not as stable. Um, well then next, um, and one of the nice things about this product is there's not a ton of ingredients, which is mm -hmm. which is, tends to be a good thing because sometimes you get all these uh, proprietary blends and then you know you really don't know what you're getting. So the next complex, it's uh, 2.7 grams or 2,700 milligrams as they listed on here. Um, Glenn, you want to run through that real quick? Yeah, first one is beta alanine. Um, and if you watch some of our other videos, we kind of break that down. Beta alanine uh, more or less is a, it buffers lactic acid in the body, uh, allows you to um, work out longer. Um, it, that doesn't just affect or have an effect within the set, it's also within the workout because as you work out your body builds up uh, uh, lactic acid and, and if you know you get to your end of your workout you get that burn. Um, so sort of delay that onset. Uh, citrulline malates in here also. Um, citrulline will increase your arginine um, production in the body. Um, uh, it's, it's popular because uh, as an alternative to taking arginine for a pump, it's also very it's good. Arginase it's inhibitor too, isn't it? Yes. Is that one of the uses that, that I've read. It also, it uh, lowers lactic acid pneumonia. Uh, a lot of times when you're working out, um, or actually all the time when you're working out, your body does have a buildup ammonia, of ammonia because of the breakdown of proteins. And I think that has to do with pretty much that's all the arginase inhibitors have that effect on urea, basically, where they're going to. And that's, and that's one of the thoughts that might be a negative of taking some of these, you know, arginase inhibitors, be it citrulline or um, norvaline, that, that may or may not be a negative thing, we're not sure. I know that they did some research to see how it um, affected specifically blood flow to the penis in males to see if that, in fact, was a significant uh, factor, like by taking arginase inhibitors. Does this increase nitric oxide? E? Let's look at these peripheral tissues and see what happens. And most of the research that uh, I've personally read has shown that it's at this point been deemed to be ineffective or mm -hmm. it's inconclusive at this point. In other words, there's not enough research. And yeah. that ties right into yeah. norvaline, which is why that's in here too. Exactly, that, that's one of the, that's the last ingredients that, that's in here. Um, and then you've got uh, betaine anhydrous, um, which uh, I just learned comes from beet juice. Uh, sugar beets. Yeah. Sugar beets, yeah. Uh, it, it's in there, you know, a lot of the claim is that it increases endurance. 
Um, and I've also read some things to show that it uh, can help with um, uh, nitric oxide levels. Nitric oxide levels. levels. Yes. Well, the one study that uh, that seemed to really look at it in depth and seemed to be a well um, designed study. In other words, it wasn't flawed. The parameters made sense because they found that they they did it with younger active individuals who are the people going to be using this and they found that it had no significant effect on baseline nitric oxide levels however in another study that was contrary to that showed that it was effective for older middle aged and older adults who seem to have lower nitric oxide levels to start so it seems that if you have a lower level to start i.e. if you're older yeah. or maybe you're just completely out of shape and unhealthy because we know that eating fruits vegetables whole grains and exercising does increase nitric oxide mm -hmm. levels having those you know, those good habits. It's just that alone is going to increase nitric oxide levels. But point being is that older individuals seem to be able to get back up to normal levels, yeah. so it can be effective for them. Which, uh, which a lot of um, times when people take testosterone boosters and things like that, they're thinking it's going to increase their testosterone well past what they're producing. Well, it's actually going to bring them up to their baseline to level. normal range. Time, so so sure. that's, uh, I guess, with the betaine, it's going to help bring up that uh, nitric oxide level to a, a more baseline level, which I uh, would mean that you know the older you are, the more beneficial it may be. Now we don't know exactly how much is in here of that because it is in a proprietary blend. I mean, the nice thing is, is not a lot of ingredients, mm -hmm. but uh, um, in terms of what the exact dosage is, we just don't know. And on the citrulline, betaine, and norvaline, you know, there's there's not a ton of research out. There's a fair amount so far, but we'd like to see more. So we can't just close the book on it and say, hey, it doesn't help because you know you can never say that in science. So you know, we'll give it some more time. But right now, it it, it seems that they're ineffective. Yeah, a lot of the studies are done in vitro, uh, which means in like a petri dish. It, it, it's not done, you know, with humans. So as they increase the uh, uh, frequency of those studies, and we did look at human studies for what we're referencing for you guys for the record. So, okay, uh, next in green is ginger. Um, you know, as far as a, a physiological benefit from that, I'm, I'm I haven't seen much. I, I know that ginger is a power or is popular as a uh, tonic for stomach. Um, people drink ginger ale and things like that for an upset stomach. Um, in terms of a benefit uh, athletically, I, I'm not sure I haven't yeah, seen I'm not sure. There may be something that we're not aware of, so please uh, don't uh, rip us in the comments. Yeah, I mean, we, we may not be sure. We try our best to research all these, um, but uh, there may be something out there. We're just not sure, but we do know from being in the industry that ginger is commonly sold to calm the stomach. A lot of women take it when they're, you know, in their first trimester pregnancy. pregnancy and, you know, the morning sickness and stuff, so it can be a very good at calming the stomach, and as you know, probably your remedy when you were sick when you were a kid was ginger ale. Ginger so. ale. And it's because of that effect, that calming effect. So, so overall, this can be a good product. And, and you know those amino acids too. If you are going into the gym, and something that we forgot to touch on, what we say about BCAAs is, is that we know that they can increase protein or in decrease protein degradation, increase protein synthesis, mm -hmm. um, specifically by activating the mTOR pathway, which means it's the cell is sensing high levels of ATP, so that's get a that gets activated. And what that does again is increase protein synthesis, decrease protein degradation. Um, those effects are going to be much more profound in somebody who's on a low calorie diet. Mm -hmm. If you're eating a lot of carbohydrates or you know you have a lot of calories in you before you work out, well, that's not really going to be a concern for you anyways. You're not going to be degrading protein for energy when your blood sugar levels are high and you've got plenty of energy. So that's something to consider too. So if you're dieting, those are definitely going to have a much more profound effect on you where you're going to get those really good effects. And, and yeah, I think that kind of Yeah, de up. definitely on an empty stomach like John was saying, uh, so there's no inhibition of the absorption. Uh, and uh, yeah, diet, dieting would be a great time to take this, especially if you're going to go a prolonged period of time without a meal. That, that's another good time. Sure. Absolutely. So, all right. Well, I think we covered the uh, product. I know you've tasted it real quick. You, yeah, I I, I've it. had uh, the original, I think this is the grape flavor. Um, it's grape. It's very powerful grape flavor. I've never had the lemonade, but uh, it does taste good. It, it does, especially for uh, an amino acid supplement, because a lot of those powders you take the... Uh, it's hard to get the, the bitterness of the yeah, the amino acids so bitter. So that's, but it does taste good. Challenge the flavor though. So, yeah. So if you guys have any other questions, please go ahead and post them in the comment section of the blog, or on our uh, on the comment section on YouTube. Also, you could find us on Facebook. We're at facebook.com/bestpricenutrition. Thank you. Thank you.